Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. 3D printing has appealed to a wide variety of consumers. Sometimes those consumers would like to get right to printing and not have to worry about constructing a printer kit before they can get to the good stuff. That's where the Focus Odin 5 comes in. This printer arrives mostly assembled and all you have to do is unfold it, tighten some screws, plug in two cables, attach the spool holder, and you're ready to go. In today's video, I'm going to unbox and assemble the printer, run a few test files, and then go over the pros and cons of this particular model. Stick around to see if the Focus Odin 5 is right for you, right here on Southpaw Workshop. The full color packaging is very nice. Normally 3D printers come in a nondescript cardboard box. This box appears to be more suited for display on a store shelf where it can grab your attention with the full color pictures and description of its capabilities. When we open the box, we find the mostly complete printer pre-assembled. This is great, and as you can see, it doesn't seem to take up more space than an unassembled printer. Hopefully this will be a trend we see more often in the future. Along with the printer, you receive a user manual, power cord, USB cable, a cheap metal putty knife, spool holder with mounting hardware, USB drive with micro SD card, spare cables, spare nozzles, side cutters and other assorted tools, and 250 grams of white PLA plus filament. Time to put this guy together. As you can see, once I remove the plastic wrap that holds everything together, all you do is literally unfold the Z-axis then secure it with four screws. After that, it is just a matter of plugging in two cables and attaching the spool holder. Six minutes is a phenomenal time for initial setup. I say initial setup because the printer did need some adjustment before I could start using it. The print head was very loose and I had to tighten the eccentric nut on the print head carriage to remove all the slop. Here are some details about the printer. It sports a 235 by 235 by 250 millimeter build volume, which is slightly larger than the Ender 3 series of printers. The printer uses two Z-axis motors, which help improve stability, and it also supports the added weight of the included direct drive extruder. The build surface is made of a ceramic coated glass that should help with adhesion and make bed leveling a little easier. You control this printer with a 3.5 inch touchscreen that appears to be responsive and easy to navigate. Under the hood, this printer sports a 32-bit motherboard with silent stepper drivers. It took me a minute to figure out how to load the filament. There are no tensioning knobs or levers to assist you. Once the hot end is up to temperature, you just push the filament into the little hole and press the load filament button on the touchscreen and the printer takes it from there. Leveling the printer proved to be a little challenging. It seems like the Z height would change ever so slightly every time I moved the Z axis up and then back to home. I think it may have to do with the Z limit switch. The Z limit switch on this printer appears to be inductive or magnetic. Somehow it senses the Z limit without making contact and I wonder how precise it is. Even a variance of 0.1 millimeter could mean the difference between a successful and a failed print. Another thing that concerns me a little is how exposed and poorly secured the bed heating wiring is. Considering the amount of current going through those wires, I would prefer to see them covered with some type of protection to avoid the possibility of accidentally short-circuiting them and damaging the printer or worse, starting a fire. The wires could be better supported also, since the platform moves back and forth quite a bit during printing, this will fatigue the wires over time, causing stress breaks. This can be avoided by printing some sort of cable support or drag chain for the wires. The provided micro SD card comes with a variety of test files to choose from. I selected a small calibration cube and let the printer do its thing. The cube printed on a raft and it came out really nice. Next I wanted to try my own files, so I fired up the slicing software provided on the micro SD card. Turns out it is just a reskinned version of an older release of Cura. 
When I went into my regular installation of Cura, I could not find a profile for the Focus Odin 5, so instead I created my own profile by copying over the settings off of the Focus Slicer. As usual, the first model I printed was a Benchy Benchmark. I had the printer set to 60 millimeters per second, which is faster than what I'm used to. Despite the speed, the Benchy turned out great. I also printed this model of Stitch at 0.15 millimeter layer height just to see how well the printer handles delicate detail. The white filament kind of blows out the shadows and the highlights, but in person the print looks phenomenal. Next I sliced a vase I found on Thingiverse and I switched the filament from the provided PLA Plus to some of this Biku Matte Green PLA. Once again, the printer ran at 60 millimeters per second and the vase turned out great. So far my experience with this printer has been really great with no real drawbacks. Here's what I like about the Focus Odin 5. Ease of assembly. This is the biggest selling point for this printer and let me tell you it doesn't disappoint. I like putting together hobby kits as much as the next guy, but sometimes it's nice to pull something out of the box and have it printing within 10 minutes. Direct drive. I love my direct drive printers. They are easier to load and unload, they are capable of printing with higher precision, and they do really well with flexible filaments. I was concerned when I saw that this one didn't have a tensioner knob, but it appears not to need it, and one less thing to adjust is a win in my book. Dual Z-axis motor and screw. Supporting the added weight of the direct drive extruder, the Focus Odin 5 utilizes two Z-axis stepper motors. Another nice touch is that the Z-screws are secured at the top of the printer with ball-bearing pillow blocks. Many printer manufacturers let the Z-axis screw free float, which can have a negative effect on print quality toward the upper limits of the build volume. Extra parts and supplies. Not many printers these days supply test filament, and the Odin 5 comes with a small spool of PLA+, Plus, which is a nice touch. Also, the printer comes with two spare nozzles, which are sure to keep you printing for a while before you will need to purchase spares. The Focus Odin 5 comes with everything you need to start printing all in one box. Here is what I don't like about the Focus Odin 5. Ribbon wiring. This is a trend I'm seeing in many printers and is not confined to the Odin 5. On one hand, the ribbon cables tidy up the wiring a lot and eliminate the need for cable chains or other type of wire support. But my instinct tells me these ribbon cables aren't designed for the repetitive back and forth movement of a 3D printer, nor are the circuit board connectors designed for the stress of those movements. In this case, focus providing spare cables in this kit might be an indicator that there will be problems in the future. Heat bed connection. I predict that the heat bed wiring will also become an issue if I don't properly insulate and support it. Luckily I can 3D print support so it isn't that big of an issue, but it would be good if it came pre-installed to avoid potential failures down the road. Z-axis limit switch. I've also seen these inductive switches being used in other printers and I really do not see the benefit. It appears to only introduce error where you can't afford it, the first layer of your print. I will continue to play with it to see if I can get the printer to home more reliably. Otherwise, I will swap it out either with a regular micro switch or with a BL touch. It should be noted that the X axis end stop is also this inductive type, but I don't think it is as critical as an X axis end stop, so I don't mind it being used in this way. Despite these small flaws, I still think with the Focus Odin 5 you get a lot of printer for a very competitive price. Dual Z axis, direct drive, glass build plate, 32-bit motherboard and a touchscreen, all for the same price as an Ender 3, that's a definite win in my book. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Focus Odin 5. Despite its flaws, it's a very good printer and it does its job well. I was seriously impressed with the ease of setup and the overall quality of the machine. If you are interested in buying your own Odin 5, I'll provide a product link in the description below. Thanks to everyone for watching to this point, I really appreciate all the support. 
If you like this type of content, please drop a like and consider subscribing for future reviews and other projects. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. I will see you guys next time.